They tell me, ah, oh, it's working. We have a new microphone tonight. Students from Township Number 3 did a wonderful job tonight. I'm going to let them introduce themselves to you, tell you what grade they're in, let you know who came with them tonight. And before the meeting, they shared with Mr. Hooker and I some really neat things that are going on at Township Number 3 and some the reasons why they love being students there. So I'm going to start with Elizabeth. I'm Elizabeth England, and tonight my three sisters and my grandmother came with me. And my favorite subject is science, and right now we're doing microscopes. And right now, the one of the things that I like a lot about Township 3 is that we get rewarded for good behavior and AR points. My name is Alexis Simpson. Fourth grade. My mom and little sister came with me. And I like art. My name's Sam Pearl. Um, I'm in fourth grade. Tonight my dad came with me. My favorite thing about Township 3 is P. Uh, my name is Kyla Hamilton. I'm in third grade. My mom came with me tonight, and my favorite thing to do at Township 3 is math. My name is Rachel Corey. I'm in third grade. My favorite thing about Township 3 is Miss Taylor. My mom and my grandparents. <laughs> My mom brought me in. My favorite thing about school is about all the teachers, and my favorite thing to do is science. My name is Jane Ashley. I like to do, um, do exercise, do jumping jumps, and a lot of cool stuff. teachers from township number three here also but we really do appreciate them being here and one thing I did ask them what happened next week what's going to happen next week and they're just a little bit excited about that so we're, we appreciate you being here tonight Mr. Hooper has some oh, oh, oh. they are also wearing red bracelets it says stand up for public schools and up to public schools.
his recognition of our senior representatives. Shelby 
high school, like 2013 state, two day state champions. Absolutely. Brian. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Boyles, we're here tonight to recognize the Shelby Golden Lion football team led by third year coach Lance Ware and his entire staff. I believe he brought uh, Mike Wilbanks and Chris Emery, coaches on the staff as well. Uh, let me briefly tell you a little bit about their season. Uh, Shelby defense and special team led the way, blocking three punts and a route to defeating Southwest Onslow 29 7 at uh, Keenan Stadium. The Golden Lions played their best when it counted uh, most in the playoffs. They averaged beating their opponent 45 to 14 in the playoffs. Shelby was led on offense by starting junior quarterback R.J. George, who set a single season passing record with over 3,400 passing yards and 35 TDs. Pretty impressive. Uh, he was also named the overall MVP in the state championship game. Shelby was led on defense throughout the playoffs by defensive end Tyron Allen, uh, Rashawn Petty, Hayden Ho Jackney, hopefully I got that right, Greg Egger, and of course a couple of guys behind me as well. Uh, Shelby football team, Shelby High football proudly continues to streak. This is amazing. For high school athletics for 15 straight years of at least one state champion team. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if you'll allow me a little leeway here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you could join me in honoring the two AA state champion, the Shelby Go Lions. Opinions, etc. And I 
believe we have one on the list tonight, Robert Queen. Dr. Hammer, Dr. Bowles, in my submittal to the board on January 13th, a portion of my request was for public record documents. Specifically, I asked for a copy of all open account purchases with Denver Equipment Company from January 2008 in the present and a list of select CCS personnel, job titles, and salaries. While reviewing the limited data you provided in your response, I found that the information for Denver Equipment Company only covered August 2010 to present. I sent an email to Dr. Bowles on March 6th with a copy to all the board members asking for the remaining data for Denver Equipment. I also requested CCS personnel job titles and salaries for the school years 2008 and 2009 to the present. I waited for 30 days to receive the information did not, but did not hear anything from CCS. I sent another email to Dr. Bowles on April 7th with a copy to all the board members asking for an update on my request. I specifically spelled out what I was looking for and added two requests. In addition to the Denver equipment data on the person and the personnel list, I requested a copy of purchases made at the Napa Auto Parts store in Coleman Springs and Shelby from 2007 to present, and purchases made with Virginia Air Distributors for the calendar years 2006 to 2008. A few days later, I received a letter dated April 7th stating that the information requested in the March 6th email was available for pickup at Central Services. And that there would be a charge of $16 each for the disc. There was no mention of the additional information requested in the April 7th email. I stopped by to pick up the disc on April 10th. Now, I know this timeline of events is important, but it lets you folks know what a person has to go through to get information. After reviewing the information over the weekend, I found the following. The Denver equipment information is still missing data from all of 2008 and only has limited 2009 data. The Virginia Air information did not in include any 2006 data. The Napa Auto Parts information did not include any 2007, 2008, or 2009 data. The CCS personnel titles and, and salaries <coughs> list that appear to be complete. I'm requesting that CCS provide the missing data as soon as possible. It should be noted that it only took a couple of days to provide the last set of information, although incomplete. I also do not expect to have to pay for additional DS since the requests were not fulfilled correctly the first time. If the missing data is on the DS, I cannot find it because the data is so jumbled. This may provide insight as to why the purchases have not been, uh, our past purchases have not been audited and approved correctly. So I'm uh, submitting that as a request to have the rest of that data provided as soon as possible. And I'd like to have a topic uh, my comments placed in a minute for board meeting. Thank you for your comments. <laughs> Next on the agenda is the consideration of minutes of the March 24, 2014 business session. It's a pleasure to vote. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes. March 24, 2014, business session. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. On that, next to some more recognition for national board certification, Jennifer Walker. development as part of my role in that I am also our national board coordinator for the district. Tonight I'd like the opportunity to share with you just a little review of the national board certification process, some upcoming changes in the process, and then to recognize our newly certified national board teachers and those who have completed the renewal process. Let's start with what is national board. National Board is an independent organization that was formed in 1987, and in that, their whole purpose was to develop standards, professional standards for teachers. It is a nonpartisan, uh, nonprofit organization. It is governed by a board that is made primarily up primarily of teachers, and it is truly a process for teachers by teachers. In North Carolina, we now have over 20,000 
National Board Certified Teachers. That is the highest of any state in the nation. In addition, 20% of all National Board Certified Teachers in our nation, 20% of them come from North Carolina. 17% of all teachers in North Carolina are nationally board certified. Our very own Cleveland County is home to 200 nationally board certified teachers. That's 15% of our teaching staff. Why should we encourage the national board certification process? Well, first of all, those teachers, according to a panel of principals, embody teaching excellence. They also model effective teaching practices and we find them to be leaders in our schools and in, our, in the district. Principals also know that that process, the National Board Certification process, is one of the most reflective processes a professional can go through. In addition to that, there are five core propositions that the National Board process is based on. Those propositions are in the green boxes on your screen. And you'll notice that each one is directly tied to one of the five North Carolina professional teaching standards. In the center there, you see interconnected themes. Those themes are reflected in the Common Core curriculum, the North Carolina professional teaching standards, and found throughout the National Board components. What do teachers receive for becoming nationally board certified? Well, the first thing, which is very attractive to many of them, especially right now, as you can imagine, is the 12% pay increase upon becoming certified. They also receive full renewal credits for their five-year renewal cycle, the year they complete initial certification. North Carolina State continues to provide three days of paid professional leave while they're completing initial certification. North Carolina also, when they stopped funding the fee in order to become nationally board certified, set up a loan program. It is now self-sufficient and teachers can access that and it is a low interest rate loan that they have for three years to pay back the fee that it takes um, to become nationally board certified. And then of course they have the opportunity to, to participate in a professional development activity that leads to growth for them. However, the National Board Certification process is changing for the second time since its inception. Why I revise the process? National Board met with teachers from all over the nation and received feedback. And from that, what they heard about were barriers. And so they have been committed to removing those barriers that have nothing to do with whether or not a teacher is accomplished in the classroom. Of course, two of those barriers are money and the other is time. The second thing they wanted to do was reflect and evaluate their process, just like they asked teachers to reflect and evaluate their teaching. And in that, they hope to continue to mirror the evolving nature of the profession and current research based on best practices. So how is it changing? There are three basic things changing about the process. Right now, it's a one-year completion process, and that's going to change to a three-year process. Initially, that's going to cause us to go through a period of three years that we won't have anybody nationally uh, board certified. So after this year, we have 13 teachers right now in the one-year process. And then after those go through the process this year, the 2014-15 year is the beginning of the three-year process. The cost right now is $2,500 to participate in the process, whether you pass and receive certification or not they're going to reduce that to $1,900. And in that three-year period, teachers will pay for the components individually, uh, $475 per component. The other thing is the process right now, they submit four portfolio entries, and then they go to an assessment center where they participate in six assessment activities. The assessment activities are focused on content knowledge. The rigor of those exercises will not change. <coughs> But they are going to restructure those into four components, and one of the components will be the assessment center activities. What's not changing about the process? Well, the principles behind the process will remain the same. The standards will not change. The five core propositions will not change. The fact that it's a performance-based peer review model will not change. They focus on content knowledge and commitment to student learning and the architect accomplished teaching. So those things will remain the same. Just wanted to let you know that it was changing because it has impacted our teachers and I think it did impact the number that we have applying this time because it will be a 
through your wait period. At this time, we would like to recognize uh, those that were completed the certification process this year and say congratulations to them. We have a certificate for them as well as a name plate, and I ask you to join me in recognizing those teachers at this time. And the teachers that are here, if they will come forward when their name is called, please. We had four teachers that received initial certification. One of them is on a field trip, um, and that's Deanna Pauley. She's with Crest Middle School, and she could not be here tonight. Um, our next candidate is Megan Boyce, teacher at Kings Mountain High School. Megan? Dustin Moorhead. And from Crest High School, Rebecca Sisk. that Dustin's also a former student of mine, <laughs> many years ago. <laughs> Initial certification lasts for 10 years. At the end of that time, teachers can choose to renew their certification. That requires a reflective rigorous process as well. We have 20 teachers that renewed their certification in our district last year, and a good many of them are here tonight for us to recognize. Uh, a few of them, I'm not sure if they're here or not. Ashley Bean, Burns High School. Is Ashley here tonight? Okay. Amy Goodrum, Crest High School. Middle School, Kelly. Now, Joanna Runny is from Crest Middle School and she responded that she would be unable to be here tonight. Next, we have Miranda Spangler from Boston Elementary. Jamie Croft from Kings Mountain High School. <laughs> Shelly Gerald from Kings Mountain High School could not be here tonight. She also received uh, renewal of her certification. Uh, our next teacher is Christopher McKay, also from Kings Mountain High School. <laughs> Sherry Weeks, Kings Mountain Intermediate School. Amy Moss, principal of North Elementary School. <laughs> Teresa Heffelfinger, Shelby High School.
Tammy Hollifield, Shelby High School. Shelby High School. I don't think Audrey's here tonight. Shanna Runge, Shelby Intermediate School. The next three names I know are not here. Um, Ava Bradley, Springmore Elementary. Elizabeth Green, Springmore Elementary. And Lisa Smith, Springmore Elementary. I think they had something maybe going on at Springmore tonight. Could not be here. Um, our last three, Molly Blanton, Principal of Township Number 3. Jenkins Turning Point Academy. And Jennifer Wampler Central Services. Second to that motion. If there is not, then I, I think that motion dies. Yes, the motion that is not in second. So then we would have comments, any comments and discussion on the original motion made by Ms. Falls and seconded. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, Dr. Bowles, you have uh, in your packet as an attachment ultimately the uh, uh, budget book. It's a little different time frame than what we ordinarily do. As a general rule, we normally begin our budget process really in mid February whenever DPI releases the planning allotments. We actually receive planning allotments. Friday before last. So it's, it's really been almost uh, six weeks late before we really got the plan along. So we really weren't sure 
if we were going to be able to uh, get the budget completed at this point in time in, in statutory uh, time frame. However, due to the lateness in the process, you have the, the complete budget in your packet as a PDF. You do not have the, the book as you, as you would normally have. And uh, if you will, then I have a few highlights that I'd like to go over with the budget so that we can get the Reader's Digest version of it. Our goal will be to uh, highlight items in the budget to come back either at the end of the month or at your May 12th meeting and have you approve that budget. Uh, so if, uh, if you can't approve it at the end of this month, then give us any direction that you'd like to see the budget uh, go as far as changes or whatever, then we could approve it at the May 12th meeting. But I want to give you the, at least the highlights of what we what is in that huge PDF that is uh, attached to the documents. The first item that you have is the superintendent's budget message. I would like to point out a few of the items in that. If you look at the bulleted section in the middle of the first page, obviously there are some things there that superintendent and, and us as a executive team uh, agree that we need to be addressed by the General Assembly in this coming short session that will begin in May. We'd like to see the reinstatement of teacher tenure. We'd like to see the reinstatement of teacher pay for advanced degrees. We'd like to see the elimination last year of no class size reduction or, or excuse me elimination last year's class size ratio increases. We'd like to see repeal of the no cap for class sizes, grades 4 through 12. We'd like to see the full funding reinstated for teacher assistance, the $110 million from statewide. We'd like to see the reverse of the uh, current school bus replacement schedule that was enacted last year, where it's every 250,000 miles for 20 years the bus can be replaced. We don't think that that's safe or responsible. We'd like to see the elimination of the recurring only partial funding for instructional supplies and for uh, textbooks for schools. And we'd like to see the elimination of the opportunity scholarships, which really is nothing more than uh, vouchers for private school. Those are some actions that occurred last year that we'd like to see, see changed. Uh, if we flip over to the third page of the superintendent's message, we built $7 million of fund balance into the budget last year because we didn't know uh, what the funding stream was going to be like. We, as a part of that $7 million that we built into the budget, we asked for basically about a million dollars to replace the federal stimulus money that was expiring. Uh, that did not occur. Uh, and we, basically that money was all used for people. So we've got our people out there. We did not uh, hold back in, in putting the initiatives that we had last year out, waiting to see what the state did and went ahead and they moved forward. So bottom line, we're spending a lot of fund balance this coming year, or the year that we're in right now. The items that we expanded last year, we have uh, bullets in the middle of that third page. You'll see that we expanded teaching positions, we expanded some uh, clerical in schools, we expanded uh, assistant principals, we added curriculum technology coordinators, we added media specialists split between North Shelby and uh, Turning Point, we added one, one and a half social workers, and of course we did not receive the $983,000 request to replace the stimulus money that expired last year. If you'll turn to the last page of superintendent's message, Bullets right there are bullets that are going to be in this year's budget. We, we requested additional funding for the increase in utilities based on new powers. Request before the uh, rate commission. We requested increase to pay the sales tax that we're going to start paying now on utilities. That's part of the, uh, the change in the. Uh, income tax structure last year and it's going to be quite expensive for us and for the second year in a row we now know that our low wealth 
is going to decrease another $650,000. That's going to be a $1.4 million reduction over the past two years. And those are all salaries that are instructional positions in the school. The next page is budget at a glance. The first side of the budget right there is a look at the revenues and it's just to give you a quick picture snapshot of where the money comes from and what the funding streams are. And the other side of that is the expenditure side of that. And where, does, where does the money go? And if you look at that, you'll see 77% of all the monies that come into us are paid out in salaries and benefits. We're, we're a people organization. It costs a lot to, uh, to uh, fund the positions necessary to run the school. If you flip over two pages to the budget highlights, got the salary increases there of course you know it's a projection we don't know what's going to happen what may or may not happen we built a three percent salary increase into this budget don't know if there'll be an increase or not but if it is that's what three percent will, will cost us you will recall from the newspaper uh, reports the governor has called for a seven percent teacher increase for those beginning steps on the teacher scales, A0 through A6, we built 3% in, in to, to our budget, so I don't know where we're going to go there. If, in fact, we have a 7% salary increase, then we would uh, need to request more money than what we, we've done so far. Uh, as an editorial comment, I will say to you that it's pretty easy for the government to build a 7% salary increase into the budget because he's passing that increase along to the local school systems and not the state. Most of the salaries paid by the state, you will recall, are paid from position allotments where they pay the position as long as you're certified to hold that position. And we don't pay A0, A1, and A2 people from those state positions. We pay 30-year teacher, 25-year teacher, the teacher with national boards, the teacher with uh, master's degrees from those state allotted positions. Those A0 through A6 are locally paid teachers, and that's where it's really going to impact if, in fact, that increase occurs. Again, you have the other things that we've already talked about, the utilities and the reduction in the low well. Final document in your packet right there is, in fact, just the resolution. That would be the legal document that you would adopt uh, at some point in time, either at the end of this month or at the May 12th meeting. That's a, a, a quick Reader's Digest version of the budget. I'd be more than happy to try to respond to any questions that you have or to take any direction that you may want uh, to go at this point in time. Somewhere between 8 and 12 percent is where the local government commission would require a fund balance to be maintained. However, they're not going to, to require a fund balance for a school system, and they're not because we receive our money monthly from the county, and there's not a uh, situation like you have with cities and, and counties and stuff like that where you have a lot of money that comes in at, at one particular time but then it, it may be toward the end of the, the actual year before the, the bulk of your money comes in. Ours comes in monthly, you know, so 
we're not under the same statutory requirements that a city or uh, a town are under, but they do have guidelines that, that if you're going to get to a certain point, you're going to incur some, some problems. But to answer your question, no, we're not in, in a crisis situation. Where we are, though, is that we built $7 million into this budget, and the projections right now that we're going to spend about $5 million of that budget, of that fund balance. Now, yeah, excuse me, you're going to spend five and seven? Yes, sir, we are. That's a projection. When the governor had uh, made uh, the announcement back in uh, February, March, about the teacher increase, and you mentioned that uh, they will pass beyond the state to the local, uh, I missed that point. So could you clarify? The reason, the reason it will pass to the local instead of to the state, out of the teacher positions, we, we don't pay anything at an A6 level uh, of salary. All the positions that we pay are either masters or national boards or more years of experience than what is on that. And we're using those positional offers to pay that because the state will pay that that position as long as it's properly certified to teach the class that, that, that they're in. You know. So we're paying the, the 20 year, the 15 year, the 30 year teacher and not the A0 through, through A6 level teacher. We're paying those people. We have those people, but we pay them locally, not, not through the, the state position allotments. And you have some people in a program like EC or uh, a special uh, funding category that is a dollar allotment and not a position allotment, and, and they go ahead and pay those people. There will be some of those in that category, but then the offset to that is we have taken some of those EC positions and put them, because they are so expensive to our EC program, and put them in a regular classroom teacher slot because the state will pay for that, and they're a 30-year teacher, you know. So we try to do the things that we can do to maximize the use of that. But those positional allotments, they guarantee the position, whatever the salary turns out to be, and, and they'll send you a uh, I guess a little junior league thank you note if you put an A0 person in one of those positions, but it's not very efficient, efficient or effective to do that. Mr. Lee, um, real quick, thank you for your hard work and the staff's hard work. I just had a quick question. That's, I'm sure everybody here and everybody up here are really concerned um, about a lot of things with the budget, but particularly teacher assistance. Um, this projection does keep in mind it keeps the numbers where they are as far as teachers' assistance go, right? Is that what you're projecting? Yes, we, yes. We, we're not looking at any changes in the teachers' assistance versus what happened last year. But as a look at the superintendent's uh, opening comments in that first section, we'd like to see that $110 million restored so that our teacher assistants are back at a, at a level that we we really think they need to be so in the classroom. Right yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. I think I, I think I still have. I uh, have got to the point that I, I need glasses to, to, to read glasses. See, it's really going to flip back and forth. You know, y'all are blurred when I can read the paper. And then, age. You you have uh, two sole source requests in your your packet. The uh, I think the first is the uh, Lego sole source request for the robotics program. We would respectfully request that you approve this so that uh, that, that program can move forward. What's the pleasure of the board you've all had?
purchased in front of me for approximately a week. Any comments, discussion, any questions for Mr. Lee? Seconded that we approve the administration's sole source purchase request for Legos robotics project. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Second sole source request is American Book Company, it's ebooks and with a, uh, some printed text. Again, we respectfully request that you approve that sole source so, so we can move forward with that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, board members. Uh, Kings Mountain High School softball dressing facility completed uh, a final new construction project as a part of our uh, Title IX compliance plan. In your package, you have a uh, full plan of that facility. I included an aerial uh, shot that would give you an idea of the location. It's basically just beyond the uh, center field fence, uh, the softball field. Uh, you have a big tabulation sheet as well as a uh, proposed project, excuse me, proposed budget for this project. I would note that, see, we did not include the uh, dressing room and lockers or uh, benches as part of the general contract. We felt like we could get those out and save some more money there. Mr. Chairman, I would just ask the uh, board's approval of this project to move forward and uh, uh, run into a contract with T.C. Strickland, TC Strickland to do this project. It's my understanding after our meetings with um, Mr. Rhymes that um, this particular plan would uh, address all of our non compliance issues at this time. But if, if someone else built another building, what well, I'm saying, at another school for boys, then we're going to have to comply with the girls. Uh, we need to think about uh, when that's done that the girls uh, factory would be listed then, and then this. Right here, it might not be counted up to so much money when we've got other projects that needs to be handled. I don't really feel comfortable commenting on their, uh, another review team, but okay. uh, I understand your question. Okay. Okay.
Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, this board approved the uh, the agreement back in April of 2010. This is one of the last ones that we addressed the other previous. Yes, sir. This, I mean, yes, ma'am. This is our final uh, project uh, in regard to this. Point. So we're getting close. So what we really asked to approve is the bid to TC Street. As well as that total project number. Yes, sir. One question. Are we, are we voting on the base bid or are we subtracting off the one and off the two? Uh, are we taking any of those away or are we leaving that all as the base? I asked for the, um, the uh, deduct alternates to get an idea of, of how much the actual uh, storage facility would be. Um, and we, uh, with the design of the building, it's about 32 feet wide. We added 12 feet for storage. Gives us about 375 square feet of storage at the fill site, which that's about $42 a square foot. So it sort of gives an idea. Of, you know, we've got a very good deal in regard to some storage there. And that's something that we've tried to do throughout this process of each new facility that we've constructed to add some storage because that's something our schools need. You know, we're short on storage at uh, a number of our uh, Locations. And then the, um, the second alternate was the uh, actual pavement and, and walks. Uh, our other facility that we built, that was already a part of the uh, Shelby Middle uh, contract. I just want to get an idea to see how much we're investing in the, uh, the walks. But we are, uh, I would recommend the uh, base building. gym has two sections of bleachers and both will have to be removed and installed uh, with full system. Um, the 10 row uh, bleacher is in poor condition, especially the uh, motorized um, drive that uh, takes the bleachers in and out. Um, I would recommend that we replace those at this time since we'll have those out to a new uh, 12 row telescopic uh, motorized section that's uh, Plastics, the Palmer seats, um, aisles, and the handrails. The uh, smaller five row section is a uh, manual wood bleacher. It's in good shape. I would recommend that we uh, just move, replace, and reuse that set of bleachers in the future. Um, your attachment, you see the uh, price of the bleachers. That does include the uh, removal and the demo of the uh, 
current Ten Road uh, section, the uh, price for the wood floor system, uh, and also uh, I have a, a, an amount to uh, adjust the uh, current basketball goals. But this system, we're going to actually raise the height of that gym floor about two, two and a quarter inches. So we will have to make some adjustments to the ball number. So uh, we're going to fly an item in for that. Sorry, the flight number just was what? Um, the goals, they're at 10 feet. Uh, we're going to come in and actually raise to the height of the gym floor, two to one quarter inches. So we'll need to make some adjustments there. Yeah, but uh, again, we're going to do that in course. But uh, we will have to give some uh, gifts uh, to do those adjustments. This may be out of order. I'm sorry. Hey, Martin. You can, but it's already public knowledge on the website. Board docs, it's been on there for approximately a week. No problem. But I, I think we need to restrict questions from the audience now. Absolutely. I'm sure that's what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Yarbrough. Continue to tell us what exactly you want us to approve the recommendation here. Yes, sir. I would just uh, ask for the board's approval to move forward with this uh, Kings Mount Middle School gym renovation. Yes, sir, Mr. Clayton. Uh, this might be on another building, but do we have any funds to prepare a building that Kings Mount is located? Okay. Appreciate the work you're doing. Thank you. We have some serious. Mr. Blanton, do I have to remind you again? Yes, you do. Why we talk on matters on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Talking about standing time. Be careful, Mr. Blanton. You've all heard of the uh, proposal. What's the uh, pleasure to hold? I'd like to make a recommendation that we approve the uh, renovations in Kings Mountain Middle School Gymnasium at a cost of $127,918.25. Second. 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 It's been moved and seconded that the Kings Mountain Middle School gym renovations at a cost of $127,918.25 be approved. $1.25 be approved. Any further discussion in this matter? Mr. Chair, just for a quick point of order. I'd like to say that I am familiar with these bleachers that we're talking about. They're 40 years old. They're wooden bleachers. They have given great service. They're the kind that come out from the wall. Uh, no rides. Parts do not work. You can't buy parts for them. Kids are getting splinters in their hiding when they sit down. Uh, they're the ones that don't have the handrails or the good walking. Uh, Fails to but for them to be able to hold on to us and find the bleachers, uh, it's time for them to be replaced. It's a matter of safety. Yes, sir. I don't have a problem with uh, fixing the bleachers in the floor there, but we've got other concerns to be worse. Thank you. And <coughs> All in favor of the motion, if there are no further comments, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimous passes. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Harris, I think it might be appropriate. It's uh, a little after eight. We allow the seniors, if you yes, if you please. please. Yes, Mr. Chairman. The senior figures is another six. A lot of them have multiple AP classes. Thank you all for coming.
while some may disagree with some of the expenditures that have been made, I believe that they've been made in accordance with policy. They've been in support of the work we do with students. They've been to support our hardworking teachers and staff and in pursuit of the goals, mission, and expectations of this board in accomplishing the work we need to do. This board has reviewed the policies we have in place at previous meetings. And, you, and during those meetings and work sessions, you made clear that you expect our system to do some of these things that we do recognize and reward our students and staff. At times, that work involves purchasing things to reward students for their accomplishments in academics, or through programs like PBS. It involves purchasing items to help boost employee morale and to support the work our teachers and those staff members are doing so that we do not lose them to other districts with higher supplements or to states like South Carolina and Tennessee with higher salaries for teachers. It involves sending our staff members, both teachers and administrators, teacher assistants, to meetings to learn about new programs and requirements. Attendance at those meetings involves cost and items like hotels and meals. Our work involves providing meals and staff development activities when it means we can get an extra hour of work or training done without taking a lunch break. It involves recognizing staff when they've earned accomplishments, like being named Teacher of the Year, or comforting them when they have a tragedy or loss in their families. It involves events to celebrate accomplishments, like opening a new school, and most important, it involves providing recognition and support for the children at the school level. So what's the context? When the district was merged, it was decided to implement a purchasing card system. I was not here. I don't know the exact rationale, but it seems like it was a reasonable decision to make. I remember attending a meeting in December 2006, even before I became your superintendent, and hearing about the program and that we had over 200 cards in use. Let me point out that this is a practice used by many organizations, school districts, businesses, universities, and other organizations use P-cards, as they are called, for a variety of reasons. Some of these reasons include that it's cheaper when you are purchasing smaller items to do it that way. Also, many transactions can only be made now with a card, such things like conference registration, hotel reservation. In other cases, we get a rebate for purchases made using the purchasing cards, so it increases revenue. And I'll speak more about that a little bit later. But regardless of the rationale, it was decided that the district would use a purchasing card process. Sometime, again, before I became superintendent, a process was established that included steps for making purchases. Those included receipts and documentation for purchases made, issuance of purchase orders to pay bills, the use of logs to record the card expenditure, approval by account managers and supervisors, and review by the finance department before payment was made. Then the steps involved in issuing payment checks. Those steps take place tens of thousands of times per year. As a large organization with many business transactions taking place every day, we follow that process constantly. The process involves review of expenditures by multiple persons with different responsibilities in the process. At least three people in at least two departments or in two departments or schools review each purchase. And in some cases, that may be as many as five people reviewing that purchase. Over the course of the past two years, we've eliminated many cards. In some departments where every employee once had a card at the inception of the card program, now there are no cards. We have restricted the use of cards and reduced the number, and we've changed card vendors to one that allows us to have more restrictions on the use and more analysis of the expenditure. In making the changes we've made, we've talked with principals and tried to assess the real need for cards by schools for things like sending teachers to conferences, pay for training webinars, and other card-only transactions. With the reduction in cards, we've turned to a greater return to a greater reliance on purchase order processes over the past two years. While that sometimes slows things down and requires more staff time and paperwork, it is more accountable. Several weeks ago, two of you met to review some of the documents that have been included in public reference requests related to this issue. You communicated to me a list of 22 items that you thought looked suspicious and needed more explanation, and asked that I look into these and give you a report. This evening, I want to do that. Some of these date back seven years, and some are within only the last two years. While I know these particular items will not answer every question, I think they illustrate the kind of expenditures and questions some of you have, and I think some of these are similar expenditures 
may have been misrepresented in representing in conversations in the community. Tonight, I want to walk you through these expenditures and these items and make a few general comments about each one. I'll tell you at the outset, there are some that may be cringe and say, well, why did our folks make that purchase? Then when I review the information, they make more sense. I do think that these were all made for school systems rather than personal reasons. There's also one related to a purchase by a former employee that needs more investigation. And I'll point that one out to you in a few minutes when I get that one. So, Mr. Chairman, at this time, I'd like to move out and ask Much like Mr. Lee, uh, my both my focus will uh, affect me as I try to do this, so that's why I need to get here so I can see that and see my notes and see and you as you have questions. And so I'll begin. First of all, the presentation will include the review of representative expenditures. They cover a range of six years. About 60% of these are four years old. 25% of them are in the past two years. They were selected by board members to be representative of the, the total uh, number that you have. They include school level, program, and district expenditures, and they were taken uh, from lists of expenditures provided to various individuals and groups via public information requests. And some were from general credit card documents. <coughs> and so I'll begin. And what I will do, and you have that information, uh, but uh, I'll share with you a, a copy, a, a digitized copy of the receipt that we had on file and speak a little bit about it. The first is a bill to Sam's Club. It's for $2,042.88. Why was a purchase made at Sam's Club for $2,042.88 in May 2009? These items were purchased by the Office of School Readiness. These were snacks used in the preschool program. They buy in bulk and store these items for distribution to sites as needed. You'll note from the date that it was May, these were getting ready for some of the summer programs that we had and then for the fall. You'll see items on there, and I've just highlighted a few things like 17 cases of yogurt, which I believe is a kind of yogurt package, uh, 14 uh, cases of goldfish, and 62 of vanilla wafers. Uh, it doesn't appear that someone would be using those kind of things for personal use, 62 boxes of vanilla wafers, unless they're making a lot of banana puddings. The next is a bill from Walmart. This one uh, was for a little over $600. It was uh, $643. Uh, this was for our food for our summer in-town leadership retreat in 2010 held at the Don Gibson Theater. Some of you will remember when you were school administrators, the school district used to take administrators out of town for a retreat and it might cost ten or fifteen, twenty thousand dollars to take all the administrators away for a conference. We no longer do that. We cut that expense and so we have them in town. We'll provide two or three days of, of training and typically with that we'll provide uh, some breaks just as you would at any conference. We'll provide uh, a light breakfast. Usually it's a muffin and a, a glass of juice. And then we sometimes will provide lunch and sometimes we'll send those uh, administrators out in the community to patronize our restaurants and help the economy there. And so these were things you'll see just again representative on there, some Cheez-Its and soft drinks, things that we would serve uh, there for snacks. There were approximately 100 people there for three days. Uh, this was provided by our child nutrition staff, and you'll see quite a few of these are provided by our child nutrition staff. They do a lot of this kind of work for our school system and for schools. And so these were included, and it also included some items that were used for breakfast and for lunch. The next is, why were we purchasing items at Dellinger's Jewel Shop? We had bills from three years. We had the bills as well as the credit card receipts, and what were these for? These were retirement gifts for child nutrition employees that have been purchased from Dellinger's Jewel Shop for several years. The expenditure per employee has been consistently around $45. Supporting documentation for these expenditures included the bills, the P-card statements that you see in the receipts, along with the names of the employees who were retiring after long years of service, and these were gifts given to them. Another was a bill to Love's Fish Box. Why would we be spending $82.56 at Love's Fish Box. Well, these were bills purchased for a lunch meeting held at the Business Center in March of 2014, excuse me, 2012. You'll recall a couple of years ago, back at that time, you authorized a group to go out and rebid 
our Cafeteria 125 Cafeteria Benefits Program. Those are the benefits for our employees. You commissioned a group of uh, teachers and non-certified staff, human resources staff, and school administrators to review proposals, to bid this out, and to come back with you to you, to you with a recommendation for that. And this is what they did. They worked several days after school, and this was the day when we invited those vendors in, the various companies that provide those services, and asked them to make presentations. The committee worked all day on this, and we provided their lunch so they could stay right there and get all these done in one day. So that was the cost, about $7.51 per person, which included the meal and the drink. Another was a bill to the cup and saucer tea room. This was uh, for meals purchased by our Title II program. Uh, the Child Nutrition again facilitated this for us, as they oftentimes do. They, this was for a meeting of uh, an audit committee. We have a group here to audit our Title II program, as we do from time to time. We had one here just recently to do that. Hardly seems possible, but we've had another group come in. And uh, this was for the luncheon for the audit committee and uh, they're, they're being here doing the work we provide, provide for them. The next is one that's been talked about a very good bit in our community, and I want to be able to set the record straight on it tonight. This is a bill to grow parking. And there's been a lot that's been said about this. And I want to first begin by showing you the top portion of this bill. This is a bill that was um, given when the, when the employee checked out. It was for overnight lodging paid by the Cleveland County Schools credit card. It was for one night, excuse me, it was for uh, one night was previously credited, and you will see that on the bill here uh, at the top, $140. And then there was a second charge for $170.10 for a total of two nights with uh, $170.10 due for lodging for the second night. Now, what the credit card folks did, they charged $170.10. This is an actual Cleveland County Schools purchasing card. You'll see the charge there of $170.10. That was the charge for the second night's lodging and taxes for the first night. When this hotel, particular hotel, charges a reservation room, they charge the first night less taxes, and then when you check out, they charge the second night. So uh, a deposit was made for the first night, and the second included the taxes. So uh, they charged uh, the one night by error, and so the employee reimbursed that to us. How do we know about the reimbursement? Well, first, there's a note here on the bottom of the bill, and this was a digitized document that we took right off of our scanned documents that are in, in the archives, and we saw that there was a note. The, the documentation also included this reimbursement check, which was for the personal night which the hotel charged to the Cleveland County Schools card by mistake. It was paid by the employee back to the school system, reimbursement for this personal night hotel. It was the $140 plus tax for one night, which was a total of $155.10. When considering this reimbursement, CCS only paid for the second night plus the applicable taxes for that night. So now let's go back to the original bill. What happened with all of this other at the bottom, all these charges that have been purported to have been paid by the school system. The other items were never charged to Clinton County Schools on any car. They were paid by the employee at the time of the checkout. And you will see here, the employee has provided us with a copy of their personal credit card statement that includes those total expenditures. The district never paid those charges at any time. They were never paid on a Cleveland County Schools credit card. They were charged on the date of checkout, and you can see there the date, right there, which was the date of checkout. And that amount accounts for the lower portion of that bill. This was for a Child Nutrition Association conference and seminar that was held there. It was actually a multiple day seminar, and uh, our employee on this day for the beginning of the conference, which was on Sunday afternoon, and then the conference part on Monday when there were sessions that interested, that were a benefit to our school district. So, Cleveland County Schools paid for the Sunday night hotel because the meeting was Sunday night and Monday, and the Saturday night charge was reimbursed by the school employee. And you have those documents there to document that. The next one was, uh, why in the world did we make a purchase 
at uh, the Walmart Supercenter in Rock Hill, and why did we buy items at the vitamin shop in Pineville? Now, it says on the bill, Pineville, New York, but it's actually Pineville, North Carolina. And we have the documents to back that up. A proper check request was completed to authorize the payment of this credit card bill, which included these charges. Note the request was provided, prepared by a staff member who was not the purchaser and reviewed by the appropriate director and the assistant superintendent for instruction. And I, I just want to give you this one as an example. We have these documents on all these, but uh, just to show you, there was approval by the uh, department person. This was from the CTE department. And it was also approved by the assistant superintendent for instruction at the time. We also have a purchase in a law that is a procurement credit card law that we use. This was included on there. The items were noted on that law and properly documented. And I'll call your attention to the codes out to the far end of that. Those are budget codes which tell us where the expenditure uh, should come from. And I'll talk a little bit more about those a little bit later. But again, there was an employee signature. And I, I like out the employee signatures on these because these are not things that employees should be ridiculed over. These are people doing these things in the, the, the scope of their employment and their job. Uh, it was also approved by the departmental person, CTE director, and again, the expenditure law was approved by the assistant superintendent. So what were these for? The credit card receipts were provided and the amounts matched the procurement law and the document requesting the check. Items were food and nutrition class items. The Walmart note, uh, note indicated it was for items for the food labs during that entire month. You can see at the top there it says, uh, or I believe the month of February, all foods February labs. And then the vitamin shop charges for a food science agent. And also provided was a copy of the lesson plan that described what was going to be done with, in the classroom by the teacher with the vitamin C tablets that were purchased at the vitamin shop. So a legitimate purchase of items that were going to be used in the classroom. You can see on the, the uh, lesson plan, it includes vitamin C tablets approach. The items were purchased in Pineville and in Rock Hill because that was close to where the teacher lives. Uh, note, if you look at the back of the receipts, you'll see that they were purchased on a Saturday, which is personal time, which I would fuss at the teacher for spending their personal time away from family and doing this work on the weekend, but I know, having uh, been a teacher and been around teachers for 34 years, that's what's happening every day. Our teachers are doing this kind of work nights and weekends providing what they need to for their students. So this was information, this was, uh, I, these were items that were provided for a school uh, experiment, so to speak, and for foods and nutrition class. We had a $61.47 charge to Bath and Body Works. What was that for? This was for hand soap and hand sanitizers, which were purchased and provided to school cafeteria managers at their back to school training on August 17th and 23rd, 2010. These were items for use in school cafeterias. Uh, our school cafeteria ladies wash their hands a lot, and so these were items that would hopefully help that a little, a little bit more special with it. We had an item at Phil, Phil Ann's Florist for $54.34. Why were we purchasing items at Phil Ann's Florist? These were for flowers purchased by the Child Nutrition Department for the funeral of a child of a school cafeteria employee in August of 2012. When we talked about these items some time ago, and I'll, again, I'll refer to that later, but you made it clear to us that you thought there were appropriate times when we needed to do this kind of thing uh, in our organization to support those who are our employees. Why did an employee uh, spend money at the uh, Hampton Inn, I believe it is, in Morganton, $84.16? A finance department employee attended a finance academy class held in Morganton on May 34, 2010. These finance academy classes are required from support some of our people, and this one was held in Morganton, where most of the re Western Region courses are held. It's a multiple day course, and some of them are, depending on the training topic, and a receipt for the hotel was provided uh, when they returned. We had a uh, bill to Victoria Stevens here up in Uptown Shelby. This was, <coughs> excuse me, a uh, 
bill in, from 2007. This was for, in lieu of an Acacia honorarium, we had uh, several small gifts were purchased to thank some out of town trainers who presented at the cafeteria manager's back to school training in August of 2007. There were seven presenters. We had the documents of the names of those presenters, and the gifts were purchased uh, as, a, as a thank you at Victoria Stevens to provide to these presenters who came to our district to help us out. $20 Here's one that does uh, make me stop and pause a little bit. There's been a good bit of talk about this one. Uh, what, uh, why did we purchase M&Ms with our new system logo on? They were purchased by Child Nutrition in bulk. Again, they were prepared for our in-town administrative retreat when we had first adopted our new strategic plan and our new logo. It was at the Don Gibson in 2010. And these uh, were later used at several other events where refreshments were being served. This is probably one that, in hindsight, we may not have done again, but uh, I can assure you nobody took these home and had an m, &M fest. These were used for school events and school activities. The next one is a question about why would we make a purchase at HRC in New York, New York City, what, and what is HRC for $820? What is HRC? Well. February of 2009, Shelby High School made a purchase from HRC in New York City. An additional purchase was made at the same location on February 9th, with a refund coming back to the system on February the 16th. You'll see from this document, which was included, that this purchase was for 88 meals during the Shelby High School orchestra trip to Carnegie Hall. When students arrived to eat, there was a mix-up about whether the deposit for the school uh, had been received. The bill was paid. That at that time so the students could eat, so they didn't go hungry there in New York City. And the system presented the original deposit bill back to the company, and we were credited for the amount. That amount was documented. We have a check uh, that says on their reimbursement. The back documentation uh, back up, you'll see a purchase order that uh, accounts for the deposit. You'll see over there on the far left, it says deposit. So this was documentation that when, when the mix-up was cleared up, Students said return and everything was corrected. We got a, actually Shelby High School got a check back from HRC of New York and turned around and wrote a check back to the system to deposit it back in the, the correct account for this meeting. Uh, this was the first time I believe that our orchestra went to uh, New York City to Carnegie Hall, and I would be remiss if I didn't remind you that they've been twice at Shelby High School. So, what is HRC? Hard Rock Cafe. I'm sorry, I thought I said the Hard Rock Cafe. And by the way, there was a proper purchase law that was completed to document the purchase made during the orchestra trip. You'll see here that that log, and I've highlighted the portion of that, that also includes that detailed budget code out there to the right that includes uh, where all these things go. Sandy's Country Christmas. Crafts and variety. Why did we spend $17.59 at Sandy's Country Christmas? These were items that were purchased on November 3rd, 2011, $17.59. The receipt had a notation that they were for tablecloths, but upon review of the other documents, it was clear that the items were tablecloths for the ninth grade student career event at Crest High School. So they were purchased by the school. They were also included, again, on a procurement log. And again, you'll notice that all of these logs have have multiple, excuse me, have multiple signatures on them. They may have the purchaser, they may have the uh, account manager, and they would have the principal, and then perhaps a director at the central office if they were purchased from one of our program funds. So the document log was included. Uh, we had a, other documents that supported that. The backup, you'll see at the top of this one, it says, Ninth grade career fair in a TEF meeting, and then uh, we have a copy of the credit card bill where the Sandy's um, Country Christmas was notated for $17.59. Again, you'll see on the lower left the, the person who manages that in our CTE department had reviewed it, then the director of CTE reviewed it, and then the assistant superintendent had reviewed it as well. Weetsy Railroad, why did we spend $1,387 at Tweetsie Railroad? What was the purpose? Did we send teachers to Tweetsie Railroad for $1,387? Well, the backup documentation is a, a bill 
And you'll see on this bill there are some tickets that were purchased, and then there was a cash transaction of $610 for a total of $19.97. So our question is about the $13.97. That included a copy of the receipt, and it indicated that we had a group of 56 children, 15 adults, and six free tickets that were complimentary. It also indicated we purchased lunches and drinks. The total on the P card was for $13.87, which accounted for the ticket portion of the transaction. Excuse me. The additional documentation that was provided included the purchase order of the credit card bill, which listed this trip along with about five others to Charlotte Knights, to several other places. I can't read that far. Kate's Skating Room, uh, Shield Museum, etc. Uh, taken by our Kids Around Summer Care Program. It also included documentation uh, where uh, the additional credit card receipts were included on all of the other trips. Why did we spend $196 at the Appalachia River Raft Company? Well, that charge was made on June 22, 2011. When we reviewed that, documentation included the proper forms and the approvals to indicate that this was an expenditure for the Phoenix program at Turning Point Academy, just through the doors over here. Actually, they weren't there at the time. They were out on South Post Road. You'll see that it has the proper signatures at the bottom. Why did we do this? A further review revealed that this expenditure was part of an outward bound activity, a wilderness activity for our Phoenix students as part of the Rites of Passage program. It is part of the Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Agreement grant. And you can see there in red is circled activity fees for the Rite of Passage. This was what uh, was done. We had some of our folks, I'm not sure if Mr. Borders went, but others went. I would like to see Mr. Borders in the, in the raft. Um, but at any rate, they went and chaperoned these students on this trip. Uh, we had one uh, that was made, why was the expenditure made in, in September 2009 to Hammerings of Gaffney for $179? And this happens from time to time as this uh, was. The documenta documentation shows that this purchase was made in error. You can't really read it, but up there it says personal purchase in error and it was made by an employee, and when it was discovered by the employee at the time the employee received their monthly P-card statement, they wrote this note back and said, I mistakenly used the school card instead of my personal card at Hammerings and Gaffney. I've written a personal check to the school system for the purchase. And the employee self-reported that, and they received, at the time they received the statement, and they corrected the mistake. That happens occasionally. It doesn't happen often, but it happens occasionally. And when that uh, employee see, receives their, if they don't discover it beforehand, when they receive their monthly bill, and as they're managing their account, and start reconciling that, they'll understand that and they will correct that. Again, as I told you earlier, uh, those documents are reviewed multiple times by the account manager, by the supervisor, and others, the people in the finance department, and so we catch those and we ask them to, to correct those. If certainly that becomes a problem, we deal with that in a different fashion, but uh, this one was correct. Question, why did an employee reimburse the district for $1,697 made on May 3rd, 2010? Was this for a single purchase or multiple purchases? This one took me a little bit of time to track all this down. But what we had was uh, the amount was for reimbursement to child nutrition by the Office of School Readiness, $1,384 on there, uh, for the foster grandparent lunches. The foster grandparents program helps us do some lunches for our uh, grandparents who come for the preschool program. <coughs> and this transaction was made by school district check as required from the uh, Office of School Readiness to Child Nutrition. So Child Nutrition began the process of depositing that. They had the uh, purchase order that accounted for that. And so there was the $1,384.44. It also, the documentation also included the number of meals that grandparents had at each school. So then there was additional uh, reimbursement charges on there, $48.65 was for an additional program meal reimbursement to, to, by the district to the child nutrition program for some lunches. And you'll see there the check was deposited for that and went through the process. Also included on this uh, deposit were items such as ice cream sandwiches used by a school for a Title I event. Uh, these were items that the child nutrition department provided to the school for their, for their Title I celebration. 
And because our child nutrition is an enterprise fund, they make they uh, are a self-supporting organization. Then, then we have to reimburse if something is used. They can't take those federal dollars and other dollars, those revenue dollars, to buy this kind of items. And so the school purchased it. We had a, a appropriate purchase order issued by the school that included the uh, ice cream sandwiches for Title One. It says up there in the description. And then we had the bill sent by Child Nutrition to the school for the purchase of those ice cream sandwiches. That accounts for the 239.70. So that accounts for everything on this bill except the top amount, the $6.27 in cash. And so the reimbursement actually was not for the total, whatever it was, $1,679. The reimbursement was actually for $6.27. This was a case where an employee in the Child Nutrition Department was going through to pick up some items at the grocery store. And, and, and let me pause there and say, sometimes we do buy items at local grocery stores. We have some children who have special dietary needs and sometimes we'll go and pick up those things. Sometimes we'll have a, a power go off and we may go get enough sun butter and jelly and bread to make sandwiches so we can feed children. Sometimes when the power goes off, we may go to a pizza restaurant and get 150 pizzas so that we can feed children. Uh, if they're still at school and we're not dismissed because of the power shortage. But in this case, this employee was going through the line to pick up some specialized items, and uh, the items got intermingled, and before they could tell the cashier about it, they were charged. And so the employee came straight back, notated that on the bill. You can, it's hard to see, but there's a notation there for $6.27, and you'll notice here at the top, that was the currency in coin that was reimbursed. So the, the only amount that was really reimbursed by an employee was six dollars and twenty-seven cents. The, the rest was program interior, program to program uh, reimbursements back and forth. A couple more on June the fourth, two thousand eight, we had a four hundred sixteen dollar charge to Shelby Nursery. This was to purchase uh, flowers and ferns to decorate tables for the end of the year child nutrition banquet, where awards were presented to staff and retirees are recognized. And we typically, as we do some of those events, you've been to some. We give the table decorations to the attendees as, as a door prize. Here's one that uh, requires a little more work, uh, and I'll tell you that on April 30th, 2008, a $480.38 purchase was made at Victoria Stevens by a former employee. The documentation was incomplete on this one, and so I'm continuing to work on this. While the date indicates that these were also items for a banquet, we're still researching that expenditure, and we've contacted the former employee and we'll provide an update when I get that additional information. Again, I think based on the dates and the documentation that we do have, it is for a bank. So, there's some frequent questions that are asked that are not part of these receipts that I want to share with you just quickly, and then I'll um, begin to close. For example, why are there charges to Cleveland Country Club? Why do we have those in our, among our bills? And so if you've asked that. Well, the Cleveland Country Club was used for a number of years for recognition events, such as the Teacher of the Year Banquet, the Teacher of the Year Breakfast, uh, the Child Nutrition Year End Banquet, the Community Health Advisory Council meetings, individual school events, and other catering of events prior to the opening of the Grand Center and this facility. Now that we have this place, we're able to host most of those events here. Certainly when we can, for something like the Senior Scholars Banquet that we're going to have in a couple of weeks, we'll go to the Grand Center. But uh, the district uh, use, has used these other venues. Uh, we do not have as a district a membership to the Cleveland Country Club. I do not have a membership to the Cleveland Country Club, so I have never charged anything there because I don't have a membership. Contrary to what has been said. Uh, we have charged some things as a system. I know some of you have been to the Teacher of the Year Banquet and the School Health Advisory and some of these other banquets that we've had there in the past. We haven't had many lately because we've got other venues now. But these recognition events for staff and students, as well as meetings and training sessions, were held at a lot of other venues for a period of time. We've been to Aldersgate, and to Zor, and to Poplar Springs, and to Jackson's Cafeteria, and all these other places during the time when those events were catered or by local businesses or by child nutrition at one of those events. And so we've done that in the past. Uh, recognition events are usually for district-wide groups, such as transportation, child nutrition, or educational foundation. Occasionally, a school will go there. But again, we have to use an employee's membership to be able to use those facilities. Typically, when we go use those facilities, we pay the cost of the meal, and we don't pay to rent the hall because we're providing the, the meal.
meals being provided for our people. And so uh, it, it, at times, we could go to those places and it was one of the cheapest places we could go because we didn't have to rent additional facility or tailor the meals in uh, in large quantity. So why do we, this is another question that gets asked a lot and I want to address this tonight. Why do we advertise through various media, media including billboards? Well, in case you haven't noticed, there's a thing called school choice out there right now. And we have competition. We've done limited advertisement because the competition still exists. Um, some of our competition rents the billboard over Chick-fil-A. I've seen it there. Some have billboards out here uh, along Highway 74. And so we've done a little bit of that. Uh, that came again as a result of uh, some recommendations out of uh, our strategic plan a number of years ago that we needed to do some of that. Most of the cost of that media program has been for photography. You know we reduced our public information staff a number of years ago, and that has been offset by contracting with an employee uh, that's been shared to photograph school events. Our parents and community have indicated they like the news and like the, the uh, picture walls that we've had out there on the website that highlight the, the activities that our children and our students are doing. We've tried the use of billboards in some limited fashion, um, and this has been kind of, I think, also kind of blown out, out of proportion. We've purchased two, two, uh, two, two or three times um, about two billboards at a time. And out of the goodness of their business, uh, the billboard company has at times given us as many as six additional free billboards. And so they've been a good school partner. And as we've done that, we've advertised and, and tried to highlight what's going on and the good that's going on in our system. Some of those were better than others. We've made presentations to you as a board about these activities at the time they were happening, so you were well informed of those. Uh, these programs were discontinued a little over a year ago as we began to see budgets cut and as we looked for other places to make some adjustments, we did cut these. Why are large credit card payments made to some businesses locally and elsewhere? Well, American Express has a rebate program which identifies other entities with which we conduct business that are also American Express customers. Our payments through American Express are eligible for a rebate, and it gets better. We're able to bundle payments to a, to a group of higher volume vendors who are identified by American Express to get a higher rebate rate. And so we have places like Rutherford Electric or Apple that are large uh, vendors or large suppliers for us. And when they're on the list, we can write a check as we would normally do with the process and, and Mr. Lee may have to speak to this process if you have more technical questions, but those checks are voided and a payment is made via a separate card that has just been designated by American Express to pay those charges. And so we pay that credit card off at the end of the month, but a, a large payment is made bundling these multiple, multiple purchases by departments and thereby we increase our rebate. And so when you look at some of our documents and you see that we made a $60,000 purchase to our payment by credit card to Apple Computer in California, we're making that payment to the home office for items that have been purchased at multiple schools and maybe the central office and have been bundled together and we get a bulk payment, but we also get a big rebate on that. And so Mr. Lee's a master at making our money stretch and this is one of those things that one of the reasons we were uh, impressed and, and changed to American Express as a vendor because we knew we would get this rebate. How do we track and follow expenditures? This is a question we get. Well we have a large staff involved. I've already alluded to some of that. We have multiple approvals and sign-offs at schools with final review in the business department. Again as I said earlier every purchase that is made will go through at least three people reviewing it now. Uh, there's a detailed state mandated, track, uh, mandated tracking and coding system that tells the source of funds, the purpose, the call center. It's that long number that's on all, all of our documents. It tells us whether it's state money, local money, federal money, and where that should be char charged to. If that expenditure is charged to a school or the child nutrition program or the transportation department, our people can look at that code and understand the department. So oftentimes when we may see something that looks unusual, we can look at it and look at that code and immediately we know when we see what the department is, why it's been purchased. 
We, are, uh, we have audits that are conducted annually to validate the process and the procedures used. Those are your outside auditors that come in and validate that process and make sure that we're following procedures. And then we have random scheduled and, uh, audits and exit audits that are conducted by the finance department, by Mr. Lee, and by Mr. Alexander, our internal auditor. And so these items um, kind of detail a little bit about how we go about uh, reviewing these expenditures. Uh, as I said earlier, some of our expenditures may be reviewed as many as five times. If an expenditure doesn't look right, it will be sent back for more documentation. Oftentimes an expenditure will, if it's not timely, will be brought to me for my approval because it's exceeded a, a specific period of time. And so we do have a very uh, vigorous process to look at these things. So now let me conclude with a few points. I know you're glad to finish. First, I want to remind you that most of these purchases, about two thirds, were from more than four years ago. About a quarter were made in the last three years. I also want to point out that we've taken steps in the past few years to address many issues of concern. Some of these have been to significantly reduce the number of key cards and return to purchase orders exclusively in some of the departments where we had some problems. We've instituted a process where principals annually submit a list of all items they would like to purchase from for their staff, such as meals and recognition items, and they get approval for those at the beginning of the year prior to any purchase. With the opening of central services, we now have adequate staff development space and we still have a rent outside facilities except for large events, such as the Senior Scholars Banquet and the Closing the Gap Summit. We've reviewed our purchasing policies, and we brought those to you for discussion and revisions some a while back, and we've implemented those. We've had training by your board attorneys on proper purchasing practices. We've employed a full-time auditor to give us a systematic and regular review <laughs> of school and department purchases, and he conducts regular school and program audits and gives improvement feedback to the fund managers. We conduct regular exit audits when the chief administrator leaves a campus or a program. We have cooperated fully with the state auditor and the SBI on multiple audits, reviews, and investigations. We've eliminated the large number of vehicle, vehicles that employees drove home so that we could eliminate the need for some of these expenditures. And we regularly discuss purchasing issues and administrative meetings and remind our personnel of our expectations. I do hope this board, as you continue to review and evaluate this issue, will support our administrators in doing the kinds of things they need to do to recruit and retain teachers, express appreciation to our staff, and most importantly, reward and motivate our students. I hope you recognize that these efforts may include small expressions of appreciation when students do well. It may include a meal, or ice cream or some other reward as part of our positive behavior intervention and support program to reinforce good behavior in our students. It may include other things that help our system to be successful. You see, I believe some of this is a part of our success story. We have the highest graduation rate in our history, moving from over 350 dropouts six years ago to just 133 last year. While that's still too many, it's a great trend that's moving in rapidly in the right direction. We have low teacher turnover rates and very positive results on our teacher working condition surveys administered by the state. We have schools being recognized as national AP honor roll schools. We have schools in the U.S. News and World Report top rankings for high schools in the nation. We have national blue ribbon schools. And by the way, we have another nominee this year one of only about six or seven in North Carolina, which will be our third in the last six years. That's a national recognition. And so we're waiting to hear what that school receives that recognition. We've dramatically lowered our long and short-term suspension rates through programs like PBS. And we're seeing higher academic results as we encourage and reward our students. And the list goes on, and I could continue, but I won't. When these things happen, we need to recognize our staff and our students provide meaningful instructional experiences. These experience expenditures and thousands of others support that work, oftentimes through rewards, recognition, and, success, and, and special programs that make our district more, suspect, uh, more successful. I hope this explanation has been helpful.
Paul, I know it has not answered every question about every bill. I hope it illustrates uh, by the review of the items that your board members selected that we are looking at these things, we're reviewing these things, and there are logical explanations for some of these purchases that people have criticized. Again, they may not be purchases that everybody agrees with, but they have been to support the mission and the work of our school district. So, Mr. Chair, at this time, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Bruce. Appreciate the time you've taken for this. Now it's time for the board to make any comments or ask any questions. First one, anybody can say it. Research is losing, causing us to lose our employees. It's causing time, not to mention attorney fees. The reviews of information continue over and over again. And our estimate is it's cost us about $35,000. I believe that number is way more than that. I believe the taxpayers in Cleveland County, for which I represent, are ready to move on. I think we're tired of spending $35,000 on this. I think that the witch hunt that is out against some employees time not one ounce of factual information has been presented to for me to believe that there is anything that has been done wrong in Cleveland County Schools. I further believe that we need to focus on the positive future of the Cleveland County Schools as we look to hire a new superintendent that will lead us for brighter futures so that we can get back, get back to the mission which is educating the students in Cleveland County Schools. Mr. Chair. Yes sir. I'd like to say that for the past few years, as this has went on, it has been an extremely tough thing for our county. Cleveland County Schools prepared me for life, and I'm very proud to be a product of this system. I have lived in this county and read the reports that suggested that this system was embroiled in corruption and scandal. Um, I was not happy that this is the way that our school system has been characterized. Now, I do believe and wish that some things had not happened. Maybe we as a system dropped the ball with our communication. Hey, I was elected in December 2013, and some people even thought I was involved in some kind of scandal. Talk about communication snafus. But as we go forward, maybe we can communicate better. There has been a lack of trust between the community and the system. And I think we as a board, matter of fact, I know that we as a board want to fix that issue. Tonight, we saw our superintendent show us transparency in its finest form. I think you want more of that, and we will continue to do our best to make sure that you have that. How do we heal from such an event that has defined our school system for so long? Now, some of us don't always agree, but I do think that we agree on one thing. We want the best for our children. We want the best for their future. And I think that we go forward with that in mind. Now, some will go forward continuing to look in the past. To those people, I say, have it. We live in the best country on earth, and you are free to make the decisions that you choose. But as for me, it is the year 2014. I don't have a 2009 mentality when our kids are facing reach to achieve right now. And I think that our employees and our teachers need support like they never have before. 
to the community, I say we need you. Not to think that we're doing something scandalous or corrupt. You can look at me and tell that that is not my wish. We want you involved. We need you at the table because to have a strong school system, we need an even stronger community. In the end, I will take a point of personal privilege and say this, the house divided cannot stand. And if you will, remember these words as I leave you. Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Chairman, I, yes, I'm, I'm pleased with the superintendent's report. Uh, I don't go to the beauty salons, but I do go to the barbershops. <laughs> Probably not for very many more years, but for a while I went there. And I've, I've run the rumors of the beauty shops that, that, that people are getting massages on our dime and that we bought so many outrageous things. And Quite honestly, when my credit card bill comes in at the end of the month and I see what my wife has, has bought, sometimes I think that's outrageous. But she's spending money in the household for our household. And it looks to me that's, that's what our staff is doing. Some of the purchases, I'll admit, in my opinion, maybe were unwise or imprudent. But they were for children, and they were for schools, and they were for the people at Lincoln County Schools. And that's a far cry from being illegal. That's what I've said. The rumors of massages on your dime and, and the other outrageous things, when the light is shining on those things, it's just not based in that. Uh, folks are entitled to their opinions. They're not entitled to their own facts. The facts are what the facts are. And I'm pleased that, that people are watching the store. I know when I was principal at Crest High School, I was used as a third signature on the document. I was usually the third signature, the teacher that requested whatever it was, the first signature. My bookkeeper had to sign that there was money in that account. That was the second signature. I was usually the third signature, and then I had to send it to Tony Bowman or whatever the department was. And I can see tonight, most of these things have four or five signatures. The rumors that nobody's watching the score is not based in fact. There's lots of folks watching the score. Which they will take. And uh, as I say, there's, there's some purchases that, in my judgment, may have been imprudent. just uh, convey some of the similar thoughts, uh, and I want to begin by saying how, how proud I am of this board to be proactive and somewhat uh, take the risk to uh, attempt to be more transparent this uh, this evening in order to address this issue, nagging issue of trust and transparency. Uh, it was back in uh, January and March, I think in 2012, following the response to the state auditor uh, that this board proactively uh, instituted some steps and procedures to address uh, you know, some of the issues that were uh, that, that identified at that time. And we came up with some recommendations and some procedures, and uh, as well as revising uh, and implementing new policies to address the issues of purchasing. So I was very pleased. I was very pleased to see our superintendent, uh, this superintendent, come forward to assure us that the policies that we have established were consistent and in line with the procedures and the processes that we have established. And it appears that it has been maintained from 2012 when those procedures implemented and to present. I do want to also express my great appreciation under difficult circumstances to our staff, who sometimes did not receive the kind of proper appreciation and recognition and validation that I think they deserve uh, for the time consumed in trying to provide you know, uh, information that has been requested by, you know, by some of our public. And, uh, and I'm so thankful for your, uh, your work, and uh, I hope that this information has validated. Uh, just like any organization, uh, we try to strive to be a problem-solving organization. We identify the problem, we look at the root causes of it, we come up with recommendations to improve that, and then we move forward with the best resolution. And I think this board has established that problem solving process in this, in this measure. Sure, we would not be able to satisfy everyone, but at this point in time, I'm very pleased, very proud of the County School Board as I represent you both locally, as I represent you statewide, on 
state board and as I represent you at the national level. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, um, for the record, this is Christina Lee. I worked in the school system for 38 years. I have nothing but the highest respect for all the people that work here. We've got over 2,000 employees. We're looking at a budget for next year of $150 million. This is not a small potatoes operation. This is the largest business in Cleveland County, the largest employer in Cleveland County. We have people that have, that will have worked for many years, giving their life's work to helping our kids. We have teachers that will do anything that you would ask them to do to help the kids. We have principals. We have directors that will do the same thing. We have some great people working here. Do they ever make mistakes? Yes. Do, do they always have perfect judgment? No. But is their heart in the right place? Are they trying to do the right thing for kids? And that I say unequivocally, yes, they are. We need to be giving them our support. We need to be looking forward to the problems that we're facing in the future not spend all of our time going backwards, looking backwards. We can mine these records for years if we want to. And from the mining that we've looked at, we found practically nothing of concern. I'm not saying they're not people, but, but minor, very minor problems. We can't spend all our time looking backward and expect to be successful in the future. We've got to move on got to look forward. We've got to trust our people. We know you look around the teachers in this community, you look around at the administrators in this community, we've got some great people. And we need to put our trust in them that they're going to try to do the very best that we can. We look at members of this board. And we see many people here who have worked many, many years for our school, trying to support our, our students in this community. And they're trying their best. And yet, as a board member, I have Repeated criticism coming from some. Nothing good being said about our school system, and there are an awful lot of great things going on in this school system. Our students are learning, they're doing a great job, and that's because of the hard work and dedication of our staff and our teachers. We need to give them a hand, we need to give them our support, and we need to put this whole mess behind us. Unlike some of my colleagues, I don't have a written or prepared statement because I tend to go off script anyway. And so I just speak from the heart to say that thank you, Dr. Jules, for this presentation tonight. Trust is very important to me. Um, I served on the Board of Education for 22 years, and I have always trusted the superintendent, whoever he was at the time. I have trusted the administrators. And I trusted the teachers because, as Mr. Bull said, we have some wonderful people working, making sure that our students receive the very best education that they can. There are two things that I remember, specifically when we interviewed Dr. Bulls, and as we were finalizing the agreement to him, I don't know exactly how he said it, but one was that we'd never meet anybody that pinched a penny even far, any tighter than you. You assured us that you would watch the dollars of Cleveland County Schools the same way you guard your personal finances and that you would make sure that we had adequate finances to take care of our students. You also said that integrity was of utmost importance to you and that you would not do anything that would cause us to doubt your integrity. And I believed you at that time and I still believe and 100%. As you were giving the presentation and I looked out in the audience and just, and, and your faces just kept popping up at me. Principals, assistant principals, department heads, teachers, and other employees. And I mean, it was just like, I mean, truly, I was just seeing you and thinking how proud I am of you and what you do for our students. 
and how much it means to me tonight, and I'm sure to the rest of us, to have you here. We appreciate you, and we trust you, and we know that you're doing the very best that you can for our students. Thank you. Thank you for being here, and thank you for what you do every day. We can't, you know, just looking at this fairly short presentation of, of expenditures, there's no way, and we are not supposed to approve every expenditure that goes through the school system. We hire people, we hire you because we trust you, and we hire people that you can trust to do this job. And I, too, want us to put this behind us. Um, it is, it's been a long time coming. The Cleveland County Schools is a great school system, <coughs> and the new superintendent that we hire, I think, will be very honored Mr. Chairman, I like Ms. Miller didn't write anything down because I usually try to stick to the heart of what I'm thinking at the particular time. Having a wife as a teacher and having two small kids, I also on my account have some of the similar costs on my account as Cleveland County Schools. Talking about Sandy Steps uh, Christmas, uh, Hobby Lobby. I understand what a teacher does and what's going on out here. Uh, we give gifts for teachers' appreciation for the birthdays, and when you know what what this is going on, you know I try to figure out why did we spend thirty dollars at one of these places. Well, I look at it and I know it was a probably an appreciation gift to those teachers that my kids are giving. And I mean, it helps you understand what, what's going on out here. Uh, I worked over 30 years with the state of North Carolina. Every day I hear, I trust the people that I'm with. And the reason I trust them is because I depended on them because my life was at risk at all times. And theirs was too. Being a board member here with Cleveland County Schools, I trust the employees here. I trust Dr. Bulls. I certainly appreciate presentation that he did and the hard work that he has put on and the hours and hours of work that he's done to get this information for us. So trust is important to me and I hope hopefully that you trust me and trust the board members here. I remember a sermon that our preacher was gave several months ago and I'll just say this, I'll just kind of briefly tell you a little bit about it. Is here this weekend or next week, some of us are going to have the privilege of going to the beach for spring break. Or you've been to the beach during spring break or some other time. When you're out there on that beach, we build a sandcastle. Human nature, what's the first thing that child wants to do to that sandcastle? He wants to tear it up and step on it. Unfortunately, that's what is happening here. We are trying to build a sandcastle and build the best school district that we can, which I believe in my heart that we have. There's too many people trying to come and step on it and destroy it. That bothers me. But I'm proud of our employees. I'm proud of our students. I'm proud of this board. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody? I'm here for our teachers and our taxpayers. I guess a lot of this leads back to me that I found some wrongdoing. Maybe not all of it is wrong, but the bills, if it would show what it was used for, then other people and myself might have not had questions. Because I've got tickets that they don't have all of that writing on it. That should have been wrote on it. They should have followed the policy. If they'd have wrote that on it, then they might not have been any question at all. I'm for going forward. I'm for our teachers and our teachers' assistants. And I believe we should have cut out some of those billboards and we could have kept those that hour on that teacher's assistant that's needed in that classroom for that teacher. We need a teacher's assistant for every teacher in Cleveland County as far as I'm concerned for what they have to deal with today. Because we don't have the discipline that we used to have when we went to school. If you got a whooping when, when I went to school, you got two more when you got to the house. That don't happen.
happen anymore. It can happen. But where I'm getting by it, at, if we'd have followed the policies when all of that was taking place, then they might not be any of this here today. And we looked at a lot of big pigs, but there are hundreds of pigs for $15. When you take hundreds at $15, that could have put another teacher's assistant in that room. Another pack of paper. I'm for our children. Some people might not think I am, but I am. And I'm for moving forward. But we had issues, and those people need to stand. And we need to stand as a system for the wrong, wrong. Whether it was little, whether it was big, we need to we need to stand on it. Because if a child gets in trouble, we stand on that. So I think that we ought to be responsible as adults for our actions too. They were, I was part of that, that pulled out those tickets, me and another. But there are hundreds of those 10 and 15 dollar tickets. At dinner time, dinner time wasn't enough. They went out and ate supper too. And I know that I'm going completely off of what the other stands. But I, I run on the issue that I was here for the taxpayer for Clayton County and our schools. We need some new buildings. And we've got to start addressing these issues and save where we can save so that we can get that money together to build that new auditorium at Crest High School and at Burns High School swimming pools at those places. I want that as much as anybody. And those bleachers and stuff, uh, the reason I and I guess I can speak about that now. I don't think you should, but I'm, I'm not going to stop. Uh, I'm not against those bleachers and that floor under no circumstance. I went and looked at that specifically myself. Those bleachers is in foul shape. The chains don't work for rolling back in. They're needy, terrible back. But we need to tighten our belts up about our authorities going out here and eating when we need it in them classrooms and at them schools. Bethware has got a river that runs down through the, in between the two buildings. The kids about got to have two pair of shoes when we have those bad rains. Kings Mountain Vocational Building. Mr. Blank, I'm going to have to stop it. Others have spoken from the heart and have gone on and I'm so in the heart too because I'm for our children. Mr. Blaine, I'm stopping you now. Thank you. Yes, sir. And I would like to address that for a minute. I personally disagree with Mr. Blaine. I don't agree with everything everybody else has said, particularly about speaking. I, I guess it's my age. I'm as old as Methuselah. So I have to have something written to make sure that I speak, say what I want to say. But I made many notes during this time, and I still think I speak from the heart. Bruce, I thank you very much for taking so much time to investigate so many questions when you realized yourself, without all that investigation, that the vast majority were appropriate. And indeed, I find it very enlightening most of these instances, incidents prove completely legitimate business expenses in support of our primary mission, the education of over 15,000 and 1,500 Cleveland County Schools students. Where it was not legitimate, uh, reimbursement was made. And I only those things out also. It is, to me, it is very gratifying that this data reaffirms our faith the majority of the board's faith in the integrity of our administration, you, our faculty, and our staff. I know there can be disagreement over the amount or direction devoted to some transactions, but in a free society, the 
there will always be disagreement, but disagreement without rancor. Free society I define as one that values presumed innocence over presumed guilt, not the other way around. Furthermore, to quote a proverbial expression, and I know some board members don't like my expression, there's more than one way to skin the same cat. For example, there may have been a different way to accomplish some of these tasks, but that's a matter of opinion. The opinion of the majority of this board is that the vast majority were not only appropriate but necessary for some of the things that Mr. Blank just mentioned. Food for kids, schools, shoes, school, shoes for kids. It is my opinion that our superintendent, administrator, faculty, and staff are to be congratulated and thanked for their efforts. And I do that. I cannot speak for the board, but I feel that the majority of the Cleveland County Board of Education welcomes any information or question concerning our operation and will opt to treat each piece of information, suggestion, or allegation in the appropriate manner, reasonable, reasonable manner that does not interfere or delay in our, our primary mission, as I've mentioned before, consistent state and federal law. <clears throat> that being said, our board as an elected body of diverse individuals coming from different, many different backgrounds and representing many diverse individuals is determined to achieve the best educational product for our students in the most efficient manner, utilizing the best universally accepted public business models, including annual professional offices. Over the last few years, we have spent over $35,000 investigating allegations, questions, requests, and suggestions with very, with very little, in fact, virtually no return. When we have found areas needing change or modification, we have made them. The SDI conducted an extensive investigation with the full cooperation of Cleveland County Schools and submitted it to the district attorney. Although he did not release the report to the public, he apparently did not find enough evidence to prosecute a single person, not even one. In view of this information just imparted to us, I feel we must move forward in the best interest of our students. And I suggest that spending that $35,000 did not do that. It did not even include the cost of the time expended and taken away from taking care of students. Uh, I personally feel that the families of those students and the students want us to continue to expend such time and financial expenditures on their benefit rather than these investigations. But we will continue to welcome the comments in the future as we have done in the past. I think we need to go on to the next item on our agenda. And that is student transfer requests. What's the pleasure of holding? To make a recommendation, we approve the student transfer request to the superintendent and vice superintendent. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the transfer request as recommended by the superintendent's office. Any discussion? No further business, then I hear a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. And moved and 
second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye.